Spires of Vulcan kind of had me in a mixed reaction when I first got it. First off, it's taking place in an era in Doctor Who that's not exactly well looked at. Mainly Season 24. Season 24 is basically a pretty rough patch of the show. Considered one of the worst seasons in the show's history. And, and painted a very sad picture at the start for Sylvester McCoy. You could tell with the era because it was simply the fact that Mel's there. And Mel was only around for that season. And Mel's not exactly considered a well-loved companion by judging her in the TV show. I will admit, Mel, from what I've seen of her, which is now including so much of Trial of Time Lord and the few adventures I've seen uh, of Season 24, I'm only short of one now, and dreading the day I eventually might have to see it. This... The fact that this story took place... I'm not... I'm just not sure. It, I wasn't warm to Mel. I don't hate her. She at least had her moments of usefulness, but it was very clear that she was... From what I understand, the actress who played her was a child actor. For some reason, she never fully kind of got out of that when she came into Doctor Who. Which also add in a very... Uh, Let's go with um, another little blockade that kind of made me wonder if I like this. This is an historical. Historicals are an acquired taste. Indeed, the f here's the thing. After 1966, they stopped it completely. And you wouldn't see it until season 19 with, with Black Orchid, a story we've covered that's... Not a really boring because it's historical. In fact, still, some great stories in the Hart and Lair are historicals. There's no reason for that. But the thing is, if you're so accustomed like me to pseudo sci fi historicals, at because uh, the closest the show would have gotten after 66, and basically kind of the closest it gets to now, is pseudo historicals. Like, well, hell, since we're already in the same era, hell, perhaps even the same day, but let's kind of confusing. Let's look at Fires of Pompeii. It takes place in the same roughly the same week. And of course has a big sci-fi turn with it with the Pyroviles. This, again, pure historical. Besides the TARDIS itself and the use of it to get out of the situation at hand, it's absolutely no science fiction elements. It's all strictly in this era. No aliens or strange technology. Simply the Doctor trying to Escape what escape what he sees as his un, impossible to run away from destiny. The premise is simple. In his fifth incarnation, the Doctor caught a glimpse of his personal future when Unit found the TARDIS buried in the ruins of Pompeii. Many subjective years later, the Seventh Doctor and Mel landed Pompeii just a day before the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. Just a day. The Doctor can't leave because. To do so would alter the events leading up to his discovery of the TARDIS in the ruins, meaning that he wouldn't have had the knowledge to know to leave Pompeii in the first place, creating a paradox, basically. Accordingly, he must patiently wait to become part of events and resign his, his rueful reign. Someone told me rueful made sense. I don't know what that word means entirely. The kind of, uh, I don't know, almost funeral-esque tone squash, really squash your fears because the big thing about the season 24 was it was trying to be more of a comedy, more of a fun thing. This kind of makes it feel bleak, which instantly takes away all the kind of colorful co comic catastrophe that was that time, that, that basically was stories that were a lot like Time in the Ronnie. Trapped and desolate, so Vesper McCoy is able to play the Doctor as being a somber and with... He, he, he plays in a somber and with 
as much gravitas as he did on his fir his final two seasons. Basically, they're allowing him to be a lot like he was in his later seasons in the same time as his very first season, which is really refreshing when you realize the place and time and all that junk. If anything, he's more engrossing here as his as he is angry. Unfortunately, though, while the production offers up interesting array of vibrant supporting characters, like uh, Moran, like a gladiator named Moranis, who the Doctor tricks and has a big vendetta against him, plus he just kind of plays this big bombastic uh, kind of character. What you would expect, um, Adelais, uh, who plays an assistant, Melanie Bush, is. Basically, still Melanie Bush. And take that or leave it. The writer, the writer, and even the actress have clearly done their level best to kind of basically lower down her more annoying traits. I guess you could say. But the thing is, she's she's. They've basically made her less annoying, but they didn't raise up any positive characteristics. That's kind of it. She's basically simply playing the uh, kind of character who... She serves somewhat of a purpose. To help the Doctor not lose hope. Even to the point where he decides, no, I'm not going to let Destiny control me. He's going to figure out a way. Somehow. And, and, and that's good to know. The thing is, I really did get their chemistry the most. If anything, Mel had amazing chemistry with the Doctor in this, and I really do appreciate something like that. In the story, again, I just wrote the fact that it's very, very somber, very much um, we're trapped here, but at least doesn't make a big deal about how they'll never escape. It's focus on the fact of how they'll escape and how they'll try their best not to make it a cop-out. And the thing is, it does it perfectly. The supporting cast, if anything, is amazing. Everyone's kind of fun or has a bit of an interesting thing to them. There's a, you know, Adelaide who's a, who is a slave to someone else. She gets along with Mel great. That's the thing. Mel may not be uh, amazing, but she's still v interesting. The actress is equally trying to make her put more life into her character. And again, she gets along with the supporting cast. The main cast and supporting cast in general meld really well and put in some really good moments. Especially between the Doctor and... Uh, Crap, I'm already blanking on his name. Uh, Moranis. I just love... I love that because you have the Doctor who's a very using-his-mind kind of guy, and Moranis is a very prideful man who relies on his strength to show how great he is. P putting those two together just gets some really interesting reactions out of the both of them. In the end, you want the Doctor to win, but you can't help but smile at Moranis. Fires of Vulcan, I think, is really good. It's a very good historical. If anything, McCoy is definitely worth watching. His reactions and his basic kind of uh, feel. If you like him, if you like the way he played somber in his later seasons, this is good. He's not playing Mastermind as heavy as he did in those seasons. If that annoyed you, which I understand it does for some people, that it's somewhat purged. It's basically just um, a more som him displaying it somber and not being as controlling, because it's clear that he doesn't have a plan, but he's trying to forge one whenever he can. All in all, I think this is a really good one to start out with. It's um, self-contained, of uh, damn good historical. And especially if you've only see if you've seen any of the somewhat really lackluster stories from season twenty four, and wanted to know what would happen if they had a really good writer backing them up, and McCoy wasn't basically being a clown.
basically it's an insane improvement over what was season 24, any of the stories, even its best, which is still not that good. 